Hey Compass and welcome to Church at Home. My name is Shaul Fenter and I'm one of the staff members here at our church. And I just want to say that I am glad that you have decided to join us online today. If you are joining us for the first time online, we want to give you a special welcome. And we also would love to send you a gift. Here's what you do. Follow the QR code on the screen to our website right now. Or just type new here in the comments to get a link. And when you are on our site, click the New Here button and fill in that Connect card. And during the week, someone from our team will connect with you and send you a gift. Today, we continue our opening day series with Pastor Brian, and he is going to talk about adjusting to a new playing field. So I hope that you have your Bibles and your notes ready for this one. So up next is our worship team. So I want to invite you to worship with us right there where you are. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart As you found you freed me held back the waters from my release Oh Yahweh Sing this with me You're the
have torn you in
If you just joined us online, I just want to welcome you and know that we are glad to have you with us online today. So we are still busy with our sports theme series called Opening Day, and today you'll see I'm wearing one of my favorite team's jerseys from South Africa. So let me know in the comments if you know what sport this is from. So we have some exciting news to share about our Chandler campus. We are two weeks out from our grand opening here in Chandler, and also after our services, on our grand opening, we have a great surprise. We are going to have some great family fun, and we're calling it Family Olympics. So I want to invite you and your family to come on over on the 15th of August for a great time here in Chandler as we have a grand opening, launch our new building, and just have some fun with the family. And if you are watching online, you'll also see some exciting things happening for you too. So last week, Pastor Brian shared of how much generosity is a part of the DNA of Compass. And through this, we get to celebrate the Dollar Club. So how the Dollar Club works is, we encourage everyone to give just one extra dollar above their normal giving in order to make a difference in the lives of someone in our own church family. We then take our weekend's worship attendance across all our campuses and give that amount to a family in need. So the Dollar Club this week is going to a family that has been having medical problems. Both the husband and wife is unable to work. She is disabled and he suffered a mild stroke. And because of this, they are falling behind on their bills. This week's Dollar Club gift will help with their bills and give them some time to get things worked out. The award this week is $3,500. Compass, thank you so much for your generosity. I also want to remind you that the recipients of the Dollar Club gift are nominated by you, you at home. So if you know someone that can use some help, please nominate them in the link, or nominate them using the link on the screen or follow the link in the comments or just ask one of our hosts in the comments and they will help you with the link. At Compass, we recognize that the only reason we are able to make the impact we do on so many lives is because of so many generous people in our church. It's truly amazing to realize how much good we can do when we give what we have to God and trust that He can do way more with it than we could have ever imagined. That's why we make sure to emphasize giving as part of our service each week. So if you want to give, head on over to our website at compassaz.church forward slash give and find the option that works for you best. So we've now come to a special time in our service where we take communion together. So you can go and get your bread and your juice ready as we prepare for this time. You can even pause the service right here if you need to go and get your elements ready. So we take this time of communion in our service every week to remember and to reflect on Jesus and what He had done for us on the cross. We read in the Bible that Jesus sacrificed Himself to be crucified. We find that Christ loved us so much that He became a man and laid down His life for us so that we might live through Him free from the hold of sin. So today, as you take the bread, think about Jesus' body that was broken for you and your sins. As you take the juice, think about the blood of Jesus that was spilled to cover all of our sins. The Bible tells us that Jesus gave His life freely. He chose to sacrifice Himself so we could be in a restored relationship with God. And in this time of our worship, let's remember Jesus, our Savior, who gave His life for us, who died but rose again with victory over death. Let's pray. Father, I just thank You for sending Your Son, Jesus. I thank You for the cross, for the victory You brought in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray in this time where we are together, Lord, may may we experience your love, your favor, your grace in our lives. Lord, may we, may we never forget how much you loved us. In Jesus' name, amen.
people will come looking for a fresh start. They will meet Jesus. They will commit their lives to Christ and we will baptize them. Seasons, politics, cultures, and people all change. The one constant through the years has been our mission. Even a global pandemic could not stop the mission of the church. We are still here to help people find and follow Jesus. We are change makers. We are rooted. We are celebrate recovery. We are leaders. We love God. We love people. We share Jesus. We are Compass AZ, and we are preparing for a new season. Let's play ball. Hello, friends. Welcome to Compass Christian Church, Church at Home. Uh, For many of you, you've been watching online uh, maybe for a year or more. And we are two weekends away from moving into a brand new building here on our Chandler campus. So I want to take a moment to say, listen, if you're part of this church, if you call this church your home and you haven't had a chance to come back yet and experience the community that we've been experiencing in the last few weeks uh, leading up to the the grand opening, then I want to invite you back. Two weekends, August 15th, we're going to be in that new building. We're praising the Lord for what he's done, even through a global pandemic. And this place is a safe place. We still have all our protocols in place to keep you safe. So we want to invite you back. Now, if you've been checking out our church, and you've never even walked on any of our campuses, but man, you've just been connecting with the teaching and connecting with the worship, and you kind of feel a sense of belonging even though you've been watching from home, I want to invite you as well to join us on our grand opening weekend, August 15th. We would love to have you, your family, join us here. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Today, we're trying to gear up for that in two weeks. We're in a series called Opening Day, Gearing Up for a New Season. So grab your Bibles, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're going to be there in just a moment. Uh, How many of you have moved homes in the last five years? Anybody done that? Yeah, me too. How many of you want to do it again? Yeah. That's why psychologists rank moving as one of the most stressful things you can do, right up there with divorce or, or death in the family. You know, one thing I found out in my moving experience is that it never goes like you thought it would. There's always something that goes wrong, something you've forgotten, some detail that was left unattended that really messes things up. So, we're moving our church. (laughs) We are the church, but we're moving from physically one building to another, and some of you have done that before. How many of you were part of the walk from Jacobson Elementary to this building 23 years ago. Yes, many of us celebrated as we watched those videos of that faithful group of people who walked two miles from Jacobson Elementary to this building 23 years ago. You know, I'm looking forward in this season to a lot of things, but there are some stressful realities of any move, right? I I read a Uh, a little article about Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark, if it happened today, would kind of go like this. And the Lord spoke to Noah and said, in six months, I'm going to make it rain until the whole earth is covered with water and all the evil people are destroyed. But I want to save you and your family and two of every creature. Build therefore an ark. And in a flash of lightning, the Lord delivered the specifications for the ark to Noah. Okay, Lord, said Noah, trembling with fear and fumbling with the blueprints. Six months. And it'll start to rain, thundered the Lord. You'd better have the ark completed or learn how to swim for a very long time. Six months passed. The sky clouded up. The rain began to fall. The Lord looked down and saw Noah sitting in his front yard weeping with no ark. Noah, the Lord shouted, where is the ark? Lord, please forgive me, begged Noah. I did my best, but there were big problems. First, I had to get a building permit for building the ark, and the blueprints didn't meet code, so I had to hire an engineer to redraw the plans. 
Then I got into a big fight over whether or not the ark needed a fire sprinkler system. Then my neighbor objected, claiming I was violating zoning by building the ark in my front yard, so I had to get a variance from the city planning commission. Then I had problems getting enough wood for the ark because there was a ban on cutting trees to save the spotted owl. I had to convince the U.S. Fish and Wildlife that I needed the wood to save the owls, but they wouldn't let me catch any owls. Then I started gathering up the animals and got sued by an animal rights group. Just when I got the suit dismissed, the EPA notified me that I couldn't complete the ark without filing an environmental impact statement on your proposed flood. They didn't take kindly to the idea that they had no jurisdiction over the conduct of a supreme being. Then the Army Corps of Engineers wanted me to give them a map of the proposed new floodplain. I sent them a globe. <laughs> right now, I'm still trying to solve a complaint from the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission over who I can take with me. And the IRS has seized all my assets, claiming I'm trying to avoid paying taxes by leaving the country. Lord, I really need about 50 years to finish the ark. The sky began to clear. The sun began to shine. And a rainbow arced across the sky. Noah looked up and smiled. You mean you're not going to destroy the earth? No, the Lord said, the government already has. <laughs> okay, okay. It's not that bad. But we do have to put up 29 more trees on Alma School Road in order to get a certificate of occupancy for the new worship center. Now, don't worry. We won't block the view of the church with trees. We're going to plant 29 bonsai trees. Bonsai, right? <laughs> Just kidding. But you get the idea. It is never, ever easy. Deuteronomy 8. Moses gave God's people instructions for their new home before entering the promised land. They were standing on the banks of the Jordan River. They were focusing on that new land. They had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And you know, 40 years, that, that makes our five and a half years here as a family look like nothing as we've waited for this day. Two and a half years since we started the Uncharted Generosity Initiative. But finally, we're here. And the Israelites, and us today, We'll be asking, what's it going to be like? What will it be like as we go into this new land, this new place? So just before they went in, they were thinking, they were asking these types of questions. And Deuteronomy 8 is going to give us some answers uh, as we move into this new season as to how we need to be thinking. Here, and here's number one. Write this down if you're at home. Write this down in your notes. You can do it on the web. It's pretty amazing. Uh, here's the first point. Remember where you have been. Remember where you've been. Deuteronomy 8, verse 2 says this. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. Now, friends, I definitely think that God has been preparing this church, this staff, especially me, <laughs> for this move for the last five and a half years. There's been a lot of testing. <laughs> There's been a lot of humbling. And many of you could share stories of similar testing and similar, uh, similar humbling these past two years. It, it's been kind of tough. So it's important that we now remember where we've been. And we remember who's been doing the good work. Moses said, don't forget, everybody. Don't forget. God's the one who sent the plagues to get you out of Egypt. God's the one who parted the Red Sea. God's the one who sent manna, food from heaven. God's who provided water from the rock. You know, I love the line in verse 4 where it says, Your clothes did not wear out during these 40 years. Do you have any clothes that haven't worn out for 40 years, right? And I think about this building, this blessing of a building that we've been using for 23 years, and it did not wear out. God did it. You know, over the course of this church's 96-year history, it wasn't through a man, it wasn't through a group of men or women, it wasn't through a program, and certainly not a building. God did it, right? We should acknowledge that and, and just give him praise for all that he's done among us for so many years. Friends, there's no way we did any of this. We just get to come along with Jesus for the ride of a lifetime. Some of us were walking around the new building. We were thinking about training and, and some of the things we have to do to prepare. And everywhere we walked, we were like, wow, wow. And you know what? Our Casa Grande family got to do this just a few years ago when we redid the worship center and repaired and updated their buildings. It was exciting, wasn't it? And it still is. I, I heard somebody say it, yeah. So first, remember where you've been. That's so important. Remember who's been at work. 
Here's the second thing, though. We need to write this down. Appreciate where you are going. Look at verse 7. It says, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills. Boy, that sounds good for the Israelites, doesn't it? They'd been in the desert for 40 years. Now they're going to be in a land flowing with grain and produce and fruit and olives and milk and honey, the Bible says. They needed to be very appreciative. And you know what? We need to be appreciative. We're moving from a 23-year-old building that seats 980 that was never meant to be the final product on this property as master planned to a brand new worship center that seats over 2,000. All good seats. (laughs) We're going to have a new state-of-the-art sound system, a new video system, a, a computer LED lighting system. We will have a larger nursery. We will have a little bit more office space. We will have a volunteer headquarters for our awesome change makers, right, to get prepared to pray in before they go and serve the Lord each weekend. A family living room to welcome guests and talk next steps through our exploration class. A brand new, bigger baptistry with water flowing from the cross over here down the water feature, filled with river rocks with our family names on them as we claim that land for Jesus, to the front of the new worship center, and closer to the bridge, by the way. God just keeps blessing us over and over and over. We are blessed. So, how can we show our appreciation as we move forward? Well, let me give you a few thoughts on that. Here's the first one. Number one, stay positive. Friends, stay positive. We hope that everything's just going to be perfect, but guess what? It won't. (laughs) There will be bugs, There will be kinks to work out, so we just need to stay positive. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, uh, Paul says this to the Philippian church. It should be a key verse for us moving forward. It's only six words, so I want you to memorize it right now. You can do it. Six words. We can do this, friends. Philippians 2, 14 says this. Do everything without complaining or arguing. Now, we're ready? We're going to say that together. One more time. Ready? Say that with me. Do everything without complaining or arguing. All right, one more time. No, I'm just kidding. You got it, right? So if someone in your family or your life group or your Bible study starts grumbling about something they don't like about the building, what are you going to say to them? Repeat it with me. Do everything without complaining or arguing. It's biblical, right? The sound system guys, they're going to be running a partially new system. The lighting will be new. The welcome areas, the parking areas, the communion prep, and and the gathering spots. Listen, just be positive. Friends, when stuff happens, and it will, we're going to say what? Do everything without complaining or arguing. So that's number one. Here's number two. Write this down. Remain flexible. Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 19. He said this, But I will come to you very soon, if the Lord is willing. That's that's where that comes from. Maybe some of you had grandparents that said, Lord willing, right? Here's the plan, but it's up to God. We used to say in East Tennessee, Lord willing and the creek don't rise. This is exactly what will happen, right? Paul is saying it's going to happen on God's timetable. This whole thing, friends, this whole history of our church has been on God's timetable. Pastor Roger, who served here for 29 years, told me once, Man, I wish we had done this, he's talking about the worship center, before you got here. But you know what? It's all come together just right in God's perfect timing. So we remain flexible and open to God's timing. Flexibility and positivity are marks of maturity, friends. Our parking procedures are going to be a little different. Our service times are are changing a little bit. We're going to start with two services at Sunday morning, 9 and 11 a.m. Two services, Sunday, 9 and 11. And and some of you may are saying, why no Thursday? Why no Saturday? Listen, friends, we have double the space. And when space and momentum dictates an additional service, we'll add it back. And if we fill these up quickly, we'll add a third back, probably on Wednesday or Thursday. I'll be the first to be excited and ready for that. So, Don't send staff members unbiblical and cowardly anonymous notes. Friends, we have prayerfully considered every decision. And again, we won't be perfect. I'll be the first to admit that. But we are always open to change and open to the Lord's leading. I remember uh, I I got uh, to be privileged and honored to follow 
a guy who had served a church for 17 years retired when he was 82. Can you imagine that? So he had already built a, a church in California that was amazing, retired at 65, went to another, another church in St. Louis of about 200, and stayed there 17 years, retired when he was 82. One of the things that he would say to that church very often when they would make a change or they would add a new program or they would do something different that he knew people were going to wonder about was he was just, listen, we're, we're going to try this and we're going to do it for six months and we're just not going to take any criticism for six months. <laughs> we're we're going to move forward and we just don't want to hear it for six months. And I thought, wow, that, that's great wisdom right there. Because here's the deal, friends, let's be honest. I know that some people process change slowly and this is blowing some of us away. You remember what the snail said when he rode on the back of the turtle? Wee! Right? <laughs> Friends, listen, change is going to be too fast for some of you. That's okay. We will walk through this as a family. Please stay positive and please stay flexible. Now, now look, look at me. This is super important. Super important. One of the most important things I wanted to say today as we study this passage of Scripture. Listen, there are people in our church, many thousands of people, who, who poured their sweat, their blood, their tears, their money and resources, their prayer, their sacrifices into this ministry and even over the last two years into this new building. We, now we, we supported missions all the way, all the way around the world. We, we added another half million dollars to go outside our four walls so it wasn't all about us. But friends, this building is a big deal. And people poured their blood, sweat, tears, money, prayer, and sacrifices into it. And just, just listen, this is so true. It will happen because it happens. Even Think about moving to a new house. You will go into this building that you're so excited about, that you've been praying for, that you sacrifice dollars for. And what will happen is you'll sit down in that new place, and the first thing is you'll be so excited. But then at some point, and you won't even mean to do it, but, but you will say this, maybe even in your mind, not out loud, but you'll say this. This just doesn't feel like my church anymore. Now, now friends, that's probably going to happen for many of us. And, and can I just say, listen, here's the deal. The reason that you feel that way is because this room that I'm standing in right now that we've worshipped in for 23 years has become a special space, a special place in your heart. Now, here's the deal, though. We're, we're all thinking people. We all love Jesus. So let me remind you what's really going on. Friends, it's not about the space. This space is not what caused you to have such a great feeling about this space. The common denominator was God. And the moments you had with him, the moments of worship, the moments of praise, uh, the moments where, where God did something in the life of your family that you just wanted to thank him for, those moments with God that happened in this room made this space special to you. And friends, when we move to a new worship center, it's just going to feel different. Even though we're excited about it, even though we've, we've put a lot into it, we're going to feel different. And I would just say to you, listen, give yourself time to have those moments with the Lord in the new space, and that new space will also become dear to your heart. So I want you to raise your right hand. Ready? Come on. I'm going to wait for you and repeat after me. I will. Okay, I will, yeah. Attend worship services in the new building. Okay, for three months, for three months, yeah, before I decide to comment on anything I don't like. Great, right. Listen, that's 12 times, not 1.4 times 3. <laughs> okay, we're, we're done 12 times. And then after that, let's just quote the verse we memorized and get back on mission, right? Do everything without complaining or arguing. Friends, this is not about us. It's not about us at all. It will be a blessing to us. But it's built, it's made for those who are not even here among us yet. Some who will come in two weekends. Listen, you're one. Your friend, your family member, your neighbor, your coworker, your classmate, roommate, or teammate that you've been praying for that's not even here yet. That's why we built that building. It's a tool to help reach more people for Jesus. Listen, you didn't feel at home in your house when you first moved in. It takes time for the new building to feel like home. You know, I've got memories here too. I remember when we baptized 153 people in one weekend, right there, right there. I remember when my daughters joined me on stage to help lead worship. Man, I, I love that. The best five years of my life in many ways 
Many of those, those moments have happened right here in this room. It will take time. But you know what? I'm flexible and I'm ready. Here's the third thing, though. Write this down as well. Anticipate criticism. Oh, I wish I didn't have to say this, but I do. You know, a few weeks ago we talked about Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and what a great idea it was. But two very vocal critics in Jerusalem said this, what does this bunch of feeble Jews think they're doing? One of them said, that stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked on it. Do you hear the ridicule? Do you hear the sarcasm in their voices? Friends, listen, you can't do anything of importance without criticism. Noah was called crazy for building a boat in the desert. Abraham moved his family and didn't even know where he was going. God said, it's a land I will show you. Jesus, the Bible says, had no respect in his own hometown of Nazareth. Nazareth. And, and it's true of many other people in the scripture. It reminds me of the story of the little boy and the grandfather on the donkey. Have you heard about that? They were trying to figure out who was going to sit on the donkey and who was going to guide the donkey and how that would work. And they were afraid that if the old man sat on the donkey, people would say, look at that selfish old man making that little boy walk. Or if they put the boy on there and the, the grandfather led the donkey, they would say, look at that selfish little boy. And they thought if they put neither one of them on it, that, that would be kind of stupid because that's why the, the animal is there. Now, if they put both of them on it, they, the people would see it and they would say, that's animal abuse. The last time they were seen, they were both trying to carry the donkey into town, right? <laughs> Friends, here's something I can guarantee you will happen, and it's too bad. We will get whacked by some other churches and other Christians. Some, listen, some friends in the ministry around this valley are happy for us. Man, they're celebrating with us. They are kingdom-minded leaders. Others won't be happy, and that's a shame. Friends, I, I, just, I want to share with you my heart. You know, I told another pastor in this community that it takes all of us, that we're all on the same team, that if we added up all the, the numbers of all the people in all of our churches here in the valley, it would be a drop in the bucket of the number of lost people in our community. So we're all on the same team, and we celebrate when other churches do well for Jesus and for the kingdom. And others will celebrate with us, but some will not. You know, there's a difference between donkeys and horses. Do you know this? When horses are attacked, they put their heads together and kick out with their hind legs to protect each other. Donkeys stick their heads out and kick each other. Let's not be donkeys, okay? <laughs> All right, number four, ready? Be sensitive to guests. Most people come to church because of a friend. Friends, this is real research. Uh, uh, well into the mid 80%, they say, would come to church if someone just invited them because there's someone there to help them, answer their questions, be with them. But friends, because of the visibility of this new building and the word that's going to get out in our community, there could be 1,000, 1,500 new people in our church the very first week and certainly hundreds, thousands more new people checking us out before the end of the year. Listen, there is no way the staff and the leadership is going to be able to handle all the questions, all the concerns. We need your help. Remember that everyone is a minister around here. I've had you say out loud in years past when I ask, who are the ministers of Compass Christian Church? And your answer is what? We are, yes. So let me ask you, how, how many of you serve on the guest experience team around here? How, how many of you? Go ahead, even there at home, raise your hand. Nope, try again. Everybody, go ahead, raise your hand. Guess what? We are all greeters, whether you actually formally serve on the team or not. Friends, when we get into this new building, look around. Start introducing yourself. Say hi. Find out what the new person needs to know, where they need to go. I, I want us to be known as the friendliest, smallest feeling large church in the valley. Friends, we already do a great job. But with all of us working together, we can be even better. And I hope you'll do your part. You know, the thing that will make this transition great is if we all change our attitude from, God, how can you minister to me, to God, how can you minister through me? Boy, that'll make the difference between someone coming to know Christ and living with him for eternity and someone who walks in and finds no connection and walks out again. So let's be sensitive to our new guests. Uh, here's number five. Write this down with me. Ready? Keep giving. Keep giving. Generously. 
Friends, it's very important that we stay on top of our finances now. I mean, it was a miracle, a true miracle, what God did through a global pandemic. Yet, we have more work to do, friends. For one thing, we are just coming out of uncharted and COVID and summer. We've got some making up to do. And I know what the tendency will be. We'll say, we're in the building now, all good. We're not done yet, friends. Or we'll say, ah, now that we're in the building, we can kind of slow it down. Or we'll look around and see all these new people and think, well, these people now are going to do their part. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> Listen, we don't ever want to go back, do we? I mean, God did something in each of our hearts through our uncharted generosity. It was life-changing. It was a defining moment. And we don't want to go back to who we were before, right? Remember when you moved in to your new house? You were in your new house, and you're like, awesome. And then, after you got in the house, you needed landscaping, and you need a new washer and dryer, and maybe you needed some curtains, and so many little things. Friends, we need, we need you to be faithful and generous now, maybe more than ever, as we move into this new season. But here's number six, and man, I'm just going to challenge, challenge, challenge you to embrace this one. You ready? This is, this is, this is a big one. Write this down. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. Man, it's definitely stressful, as you've heard me talk about this. I kind of feel like this. Yeah. So if you see me pacing back and forth, fretting and worrying about little stuff, just kick me. I, I, let's lighten up. Let's have fun. I told our staff recently, I want you to pray. I, of course, one is to prepare. But then let's praise. Let's praise God for what he's done. How many Christians even get to be a part of something like this? Friends, someday thousands of people will look back on this moment in our history and be so grateful for our faith and our sacrifice. So enjoy it. I've just decided I'm not going to let pressure or fatigue or unexpected change or anybody steal my joy. You know what Nehemiah said after they got that wall built? Nehemiah said to the people, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. Send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's say that last part together. Ready? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Friends, we need to remember where we've been. We need to appreciate where we're going by God's grace. And then the last one, number three, we need to maintain humility. Maintain humility. Verses 10 through 14 in Deuteronomy 8 say this. Praise the Lord for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine homes and settle down, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. Now, friends, I can't believe it. You would think that'd be impossible, right? After all that God had done for the people of Israel? I mean, wouldn't you think that'd be impossible? How could they be proud? How could they forget the Lord? But if you read ahead, they were proud, and they forgot God. Can I say it like this? Prosperity has destroyed more Christians than adversity ever has. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Prosperity has destroyed more Christians than adversity ever has. So don't be proud. Don't gloat. The Bible said pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives his grace to the humble. Do you like the proud? You like hanging out with people that brag about everything? Friends, listen, don't brag about the size of the building or, or, or how awesome it looks or, or our attendance. Rejoice. Don't be arrogant. Be enthusiastic, but not obnoxious. Invite your friends, but don't be overbearing. Maintain humility. We want God to get the glory, right? Not us. It's to his name. But adjusting to a new playing field is a great challenge. <laughs> and that's why I brought this message to you today. And, and I would say this. Yet with great challenge comes great opportunity, right? And as I think about all that God has done, and how we follow him into this uncharted territory and, and how he has blessed us. It just reminds me of why we do what we do in the first place. Watch this video.
Friends, isn't that amazing? I, I love those weekends. I love what God does. Our mission is to lead people to find and follow Jesus Christ. And this new building is going to be a tool to help us do that in ways we've never done it before. So I hope you will prepare your heart. I hope you will pray and prepare and get ready to praise as we move in in two weekends and celebrate what God has done and appreciate where he's taken us. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this church, your church. Thank you for the ways that you have blessed, the ways that your hand of favor has been on us for 96 years. Lord, we want to continue to honor you. We want to be faithful. We want to be humble. We want to appreciate what you've done as we look back, and we want to appreciate where we're going as you take us into the future. So, Lord, help us to have humble hearts, hearts of gratitude. Help us to continue to be generous with our time, with our resources, with our talents as we continue to live out the mission you've called us to here in Chandler, Arizona, Casa Grande, and beyond, literally all around the world. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. There was a moment when the lights went out When death acclaimed its victory King of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on the cross they made for sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What a sacrifice was As the heavens roll
thank you so much for joining us online and spending time with us. We are so grateful that we could worship together even as we are separated by a distance. If you can make it in person at any one of our campuses, we would love to meet you and connect with you. If not, we'll be right here online next week and we can't wait to gather again. Remember that church does not end here. So if you need prayer, please connect with us online by heading over to our website or sending us a message on our socials or by simply sending us a text to the number that you will see on your screen right now. So if you would love to serve online or in person, feel free to check out our website. We would love to have you to serve on one of our teams. And one of our hosts will drop the link in the comments right now. So if you feel that this is you, that you would love to serve at our uh, campuses or online, feel free to click the link or ask someone in the comments to send you that link. So as we go out this week, remember to love God, love people, and share Jesus. Have a great week.